Jungle are gonna be hard to really uh, get in and do anything about though. And we'll see what they get up to. Game two, Talon all smoked up, heading out onto three different lanes while Entity are gathered up together. Walking hands held and five man smoke out into mid. Well, this could be an early clash here if they catch a glimpse of someone. We'll see Fishman. where the Observer Wards get dropped as Entity. Gonna run into a Warlock here on the high ground, smoke revealing. Ooh, Clutch by Oli. Breaks. Yeah, he he's took out. the Watcher and then he ran away. So he saw them smoke. I see he's all coming. Well, they, they, they also saw that ward get placed? Um, yeah, they, they saw that they don't have a ward anymore. And they will I think stick it was around. Vench had at least. It, was it Treant who carried it? I, I think Vench had it on. Now, Vench had one and she placed it up on that, uh, on that high ground. In the yeah. mid lane, though, there's like Raiden and Dire Wards stand next to each other, but I'm not sure oh, if Mikoto was hiding in the trees to get that down. Those were both uh, smoke placed, so Mikoto okay. was still in smoke. He, uh, so nobody knows about the, the mid wards, but yeah, I think maybe they can get a D ward there on Talon. Yeah, we'll see if they, they want to utilize that. Entity That's trying left. for three runes now. This is dangerous play if they were to go in. Oh, and Stormstorm was going for that. Watson's wandering around. Gets it. Katomi, Stormstorm, and Mom. Yeah, they get three. That's some confident play, just walking up and taking it. So gets a tip from Fishman. Stormstorm in no real fear as he could skill up the blink in worst case scenario. And there's not really great heroes for killing him. Oh, look at this. Q and jabs. Are, are we doing it? Are we trampling this creep wave to get the range creep killed? No, they're bottom blocking. They're trying to keep the creep wave as close as possible to a tower so that the wave is going to push early. This is a really nice play. Uh, so you can see now the tire creeps are coming in. Sven does get the deny. Watson is like, nope, damn you. <laughs> he tips them. Absolutely not. The mind games between him and the Primal Beast there. Just like waiting. Do I hit? Do I not? Watson yeah. comes out ahead. But now you can see the lane is automatically going to push immediately. And the small camp is blocked. Obviously, there are no creeps yet to pull. But Fishman is, you know, on the money. Immediately drops a sentry to try and uh, go for a D ward. Surprised he doesn't complete <laughs> the, creeps the D ward. Oh, it. the creeps do it. <laughs> oh, he saw it. Wow. That's some sick tech. That's some five heads. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Just go to the lane. I'm using that. <laughs> that's, that's one of those things where you're like, nice, yeah. Yeah, he, he saw it just with Sentry Ward giving enough fish in, that he was like, yep, the creeps are going to take care of this. Oh, pretty cool. Well, Jabs. Still going to be quite forward in this lane. The Scarath against Venge. The Fallen against the Risen. The old lore battle between the two. We'll see if the lovers are going <laughs> to take each other out in this matchup. His secret love. <laughs> Lots of getting pummeled. Bit of damage here, though. Yeah, the pull is nice, though. Getting a semi pull like this, not pulling all the creeps, allows them to deny more of the lane creeps. But Q is coming over, trying to secure some last hits. Not gonna get anything yet. Make life a little more difficult for Fishman. And it's up towards top, 23. Dropping low, but Amar knew he had seven one charges and a fairy fire, so don't go diving tower. Instead, just look for that farm to continue. Keep your lane presence going. Yeah, these side lanes are both pretty dangerous. We could see action erupt on any of them. Mid, bit of a courier kill there. Miss Micro by Mikoto getting too close to the queen. Hmm. He already has his bottle and the refill with the water rune, so... They're not, not tragic, but these little advantages. Storm Storm are getting that additional bit of gold. It's going to feel nice for him. Already 13-1, so a slight lead over the Ember Spirit in that mid lane. Yeah, going for a no Shadow Strike build as well. I think uh, th this build can be nice if you're uh, confident that you can do well in the matchup even without getting the Shadow Strike. Then it makes you a little bit more early. Um, come, on, come online a little bit earlier for the rotations and ganking. Top oh, lane. Top lane. Grasp and upheaval. The body block. <laughs> Trying to yeah, counteract Amar. all the slows. And there's the kill. The takedown with a lightning of Amar. And get Oli. another. Yeah, getting punched down. Amar gets the double kill in that top lane. You said it was dangerous. Oh my god, it was. Dude, Amar getting a double kill first level like this on his racer, he's about to tear this game apart. I can already feel it. He's he's one of those players that I actually respect his racer play. Otherwise, racer feels like such a dull hero to me, which doesn't make sense because racers are supposed to be sharp, huh? But <laughs> but Amar, he really knows his ins and outs on this hero. Oh, he sure does. And uh, with a trillion to back you up, uh, packing a punch, slowing people down, really helps him get on top of people. Now, that, that, that mid lane, I've got a few questions. Because we've 
We've seen these Ember Spirit, like, dodging spells. Can you dodge Shadow Strike? Can you dodge Scream with Slight of Fist? Is that still a thing? Yeah, you can dodge either of them. Uh, it's easier the more creeps are nearby. The longer you're in Slight of Fists, uh, the easier it is. But you can do it even with just the enemy hero nearby if you time it correctly. Um, it's like the projectile will keep following you unless it connects to you while you're in Slight. Yeah. So you need to do it in a, in a good way, basically. Yeah, so it's like... Uh... Like that ball lightning into Spirit Breaker charge kind of deal, right? You're invulnerable while it connects. Yeah, sort of like that. Exactly. You, you tank it. Um, but yeah, he already dodged uh, Scream of Pain like twice, I think, in the lane here. Uh, so I've been watching a little bit on mid bottom lane now. See it go onto the Skyrath. Yeah, I mean, Watson, he's going to have to run away from Trample. Skyrath Mage heals back up a little bit. Fishman giving chase. The dive under tier one not successful from the Beast. Might have to come back and deal with Fishman now. Everyone's so low on resources. There's like no mana to play with, no HP left, and Fishman. Ooh, he's close to death. One more hit is there. He was st stepping, and now the dive in from Jabs and Q. Oh, they're looking for Watson. Burning oh, the glyph is raging. They, they glyph the creep wave as well. Going under the tower, and Jabs is cool down. Does he have trample up? He does. The chase forward, and Watson yeah. Warcroys runs running. away, and the blood grenade and the grasp. It'll slow down the primal beast, keeping Watson alive. Yeah, Boots and Warcry, pretty fast man, so he manages to stay alive, but he is not very healthy anymore. He used his salve as well, gets past the tangle, and he's kind of trying to recover some HP, but this leaves the lane pretty difficult to farm for him. Ventures back to try and help him, though. Yeah, not a comfortable time. <laughs> These side lanes, position one here is a little sad. Both sat close to 20 last hits, though, so their farm rate's still pretty solid. Yeah, so uh, not not too different on the on the carries overall, but on the mid we see you know also pretty even uh, leaning stage here, 32 and 28 for the last hits respectively. Is it is it more important though for the PA to get an earlier laning uh, a better early laning stage versus the Sven who has that innate cleave? Uh, I would actually say it the other way around. I think Sven needs to get ahead uh, in a good way. Um, like yeah, PA will farm slower. But Sven has to be ahead by quite a bit to uh, take over the game, whereas PA, she can just, you know, recover nicely, even if the game isn't the best for her in the start. Mm. Her uh, goal is just going to be jungling for a longer period of time anyway. Oh, Sven needs that early investment. The Alchemist effect. He really Still. ramps up. Once you get Mask of Madness and Echo Saber, you, you start farming ridiculously fast. Still no move out of the mid lane from this. Ember and Queen of Pain. Might see it soon, though. It's a bit of aggression top. Q's come up here to help 23. Kata Thomas. only very tanky, though, with plenty of one charges and a Lotus. Not too bothered by it, which allows Amar to actually swing back into action. Looks for the Skyrath Mage, completes his killing spree, and keeps three Talon heroes entertained top. 2v3 and winning the fight. This is big. And Amar, again, back to the lane, bullies the PA back a bit. And sure, even though you're winning lane on Razor, PA is still getting some farm. The benefit of having that Siphon Dagger. Bottom now. Big invasion for the Wisdom Rune as Stormstormer joins in. Why, hello there. Oh, you've tried to trample, have you? Ember Spirit is joining in as well. And the Onslaught to get a bit of distance. They've killed Fishman and Stormstormer. He's blinked in for oh, that Wisdom Rune. Doesn't he doesn't have a TP it. scroll. He does not have TP. Blink in one second, but it looks pretty dead no matter what <laughs> happens. Maybe in. he can get, get out of range. Don't get the XP, but Makoto closes the gap. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do any tricks there. He was going for the enemy base to try and TP out, but Ember has that high mobility. A lot of heroes did TP over, but that was Queen Ulti expended, didn't get a kill for it, and then dying to the Ember as well. Going to give Mikoto a bit of an edge here, so not worth it at the end of the day. Well, Mars going to see Jabs TP in, pulverized immediately, but he's reasonably tanky on this Razor, so they switch target, go for the Treant instead. This is a necessary move to make 23 a bit more comfortable in this lane as the Razor is ramping up so fast. Yeah, you've got a full Falcon Blade coming in on the Courier as well, so adding a bit of mana as well as max HP here. Lifting up to go on the tower. Ooh, he's he got gets it! it. I, I did not expect that would die, but like I said, man, Amor, he, he, did, he ran the numbers. He, he will drink their milkshake. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, man. <laughs> I like... Oh man, I can't. There was a Reddit thread explaining it like a year ago, and I can't remember. It's some it's some reference to a reference, and I can't remember what it is. I have to look. We'll have to look after. Yeah, there's, there's some. I, I, it's some like you know song Chats, lyric educators. game. Yeah, some, someone type it in chat. We'll keep tabs on it. There's absolutely some kind of like weird wild reference to something. <laughs> 
drink your milkshake. Uh, I mean, he's off to a fantastic start now. 4-0 on this race. Can't TP base to a refill here as he's used all his mana. Missing 800. Wants to get a bit of a refill and come back out and fight. Storm Stormer. And wander away from a couple of invaders. Got that DD just... rune, so hits really hard, but can't really stand and fight with the threat of Ember. Yeah. And we're peeking into some of these stacks as well. Like left side of the map, that radiant triangle looks pretty built up. Lots of investment being banked there by Entity. Top lane, Katomi just going to be sitting on this lane, gathering up experience while the mob will return. Uh, aggression in mid, a 2v2, but nothing coming out of it as everyone Primal just disengages. Tough. Wants to gank. He sure does. Ollie just getting slapped down by Amar already, though. So, again, it's 3v2. Jabs comes a little delayed. Looking at this Amar Razor who stands and fights. Oh, he's dropping lower, though, with 23 getting on top of him. They should be able to take that big ticket kill. Oh, so much gold. Jabs getting turned on, though. Fishman with a blood grenade, but the tanky beast will walk it off. Fatal Bonds doing a lot of work there, despite the fact that Warlock died immediately. He got the Fatal Bonds out, hit the Treant Protector as well, so he couldn't really go in and do any auto attacks because he was dropping low as the Racer was being focused. He, he took like 600 damage or something from just the Fatal Bonds alone. And Q keeping these moves going. From bot to top to mid to top, back to mid again. But it will be Stormstormer to bottle the Shield Rune. Mikoto made the move towards it. I think stunned and controlled a little bit here, and Fishman has to be wary of his own positioning, knowing that Q can start blasting him down. And Storm Stormer doesn't want to continue chasing there into the Ember Spirit. It's just a non-stop poking and prodding, looking for the weaknesses. Aggressive game coming out again here, as we expected after game one. These two teams really fighting for every bit of advantage you can get. Jeez. <laughs> Fatal Bond slight of faced, careful, hey? <laughs> and Creep Camp is doing quite a bit of damage to the tree, and do you see this man now having a pretty good time, though, farming yeah. up as he has kind of gone undetected. He's still 0, zero, zero. All the effort is being put on shutting down Mar or ganking Stormstormer on his queen. So Sven is brewing. Now he's been undisturbed for a little bit. Get that farm going. Second place behind the Razor. Got to feel pretty good. Stormstormer smoked up here with his shield rune. Looking for anybody lurking in the shadows, so the PA is off to the east, a little further away. And Entity, what, four members up here? Coming through the Twin Gate and TPing to Tier 1. They got level 6 on forces. Tree. They can root. Yeah, they can. Get onto this Makoto Ember Spirit with some pure damage and that magical nuke to bring him down. Yeah, the neutral creeps gave him the level 6 there, so the Stormstormer farming the camp allowed them to make this play set up for the, the combination. That was an important kill. First death of Nik Mikoto here. I see you had a pretty good start otherwise on Ember. But they're going to lose their safe lane tower. And bottom tower is being kept alive right now by Entity. They have the tree and protector as well. So poke damage is not going to be enough to slowly take a tower. You need to make a concerted effort. And that's where Talon's draft, you could say, has a bit of a weakness. Look at their tower push. Mm. It's non-existent. It's like Golem, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much it, yeah. The sky doesn't want to get close to hit it. All looks like, again, everyone's kind of playing from fog, right? There's all these heroes that want to get into back line or want to have that second wave of initiation. And Primal Beast, a little later on, he's going to be the one that just charges in, dumps everything onto somebody, break vision. But for now, he's going to have to be... Yeah, it's got quite a farming got full time. blade mill coming out, so uh, Primal Beast basically hit a power spike right now, so he could keep fighting with his team. We have a smoke coming down towards him. As they understand, cracking the bottom tier 1 tower would be really beneficial for them. But uh, Karaomi is basically just, you know, doing his tree and duties here, sitting and uh, taking care of the tower, repairing it. Smoke gank is not gonna find him for now. It's such a nuisance trying to gank into a tree. Oh, he's oh, just spotted. I'll spot him. You see him now. Hello there. This tower belongs to us, I believe. A quick kill. And this gives information. This gives room to Entity. That's why they've gathered up mid. A couple of heroes there. And of course, we still have Sven just pummeling through ancient stacks and camps on the left side of that map. Yeah, he cleared a massive ancient stack. Got a ton of gold from that. So while this gank was happening, he got some serious net worth advantage now. Flying ahead of the PA by 2,000. It's kind of expected, though. It's not really a disaster for uh, Talon being behind in the carry farm like this. This is more the way the matchups goes. And they do bring down that bottom tower after that gank, so very importantly opening up the map a little bit for themselves. 
But mid tower is taking chip damage here over time. The Venge and the Queen just going for it. Right, Ollie really doesn't want to show himself. And if he starts upheavaling, he's going to get wave of terror swapped back. Just sit there and gather up XP. Crack level 6. And he's ready with his golem now. A little bit of calm. Gives Entity the space just to continue farming like 60-70% of the map. Oh, Talon nice, trying to... Uh, nice game for a Mar to go Manta style as well. He's going for it on Racer, so... Opting to go for a Falcon Blade Manta routes. I didn't consider it, but yeah. Manta style against the Warlock and the Skywrath here. Even against Searing Chains. Mm. Pretty fantastic. Super value. Entity absolutely starting to edge away that 4k net worth lead and kill score, you know, 6 to 6, but it's this overall map control giving more areas that Entity can farm through. And of course, Sven with that cleave able to more effectively kill off Ancients earlier on. I'm still waiting for PA to finish her Battle Fury, which is about 300 gold away now. I was almost hearing the Jaws music here, watching Jabs just sit and watch the tree and protector. He's like, I just need a little bit of help and I can kill him. Guys, we can kill him any moment. But Skyrath was too far away, not able to join for this kill. <laughs> Living armor on that mid-tier one. Good luck pushing. Even bringing Watson and Fishman here, like if Makoto stuck around, potential for him to die even with his mobility. Yeah, the lockdown, you have to respect it. The Venge stun, the Tree and Protector ulti, and the Dispense stun as well. Or even the burst from Queen of Pain. There are different ways you can die. They are setting up a gank on Stormstormer here, realizing he's farming where he shouldn't be. Catch him out. Can they finish him off? No, they cannot. Stormstormer's half HP. Living armor's on him, and he just TPs. Meanwhile, Ahmad does die. Q. I'm gonna grab the kill there with the rest of the team, so a bit of a split effort from Talon finding... A couple of core initiations and getting one of the kills. That's a huge kill though, 800 gold almost for bringing him down. And it was a pretty fantastic time to bring him down as well as he was closing in on item timings. Actually, looks like he bought the recipe for Manta style, but then bought the Ogre Club as he got ganked there. Trying to not lose gold, I suppose. He did have... Uh, I, I think he mispurchased actually, because he did not want to buy that. He, he wanted the Manta style. His courier is now sitting at the secret shop, but now he's going to have to farm a thousand gold for the Manta style again. Oh, so far away. Maybe his courier was not on the secret shop as he tried to purchase, and it bought the Ogre Club instead. Yeah, just buy that quick buy button. Pressing it a little too quickly, maybe. All right, now he's sat in the trees down south. Q and Jabs. I think it walked into. The Pulverize comes. Katomi getting slapped around, but he gets the Overgrowth down. Jabs getting caught up in this. Mystic Flare looked decent, but Katomi tanks it and helps Amar out. Three oh, members of Talon now just gonna have to get the hell out of here. Ma, yeah, super tanky, just you know, breaks through everything. Yeah, they had a lot of people nearby, so protecting Amar as he goes in there. But surprised they didn't try to use the Skyrath ulti earlier there during the primal because he had time to get healed up a little bit, got time to get his magic stick out and everything before the Sky ulti came in. And Storm Stormer feels pretty free just to jump away. Not too many yeah. things that can catch him out. I was going to mention that too, when he blinked away top there, that's the max blink early build, right? Not going two points in Shadow Strike allowed him to have higher mobility to get away from the Primal Beast, because he just blinked into him and then uh, after Pulverize quickly blinked away again. I'm going for a pretty decent scaling build as well. Kaiosang pretty much completed on Stormstormer on top of that Falcon Blade Treads. Just going to have that status resistance. Yeah, I have to expect him to want an Aghanim Scepter this game. We might see him go BKB after the Kaiosanj, but usually just going Kaiosanj when Falcon Blade is enough to, to go for the Aghanim Scepter right after. Well, there's our Manta Stall on the Razor. This ward has done so much. <laughs> it's gotten so many kills for them right now, bottom. The, it has lived a full life as well, only 56 seconds remaining. It's about to time out, but another kill on Tree and Protector. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a kill for kill's sake. You get a bit of map down there, get a bit more farm, pressure razor out of there, but you just see the rest of the map that Entity are utilizing, and we haven't seen... Yeah, we look at this guy. We haven't seen Sven in, like, five minutes. He's been off map, farming up a storm. He's well, got his BKB, disassemble that Echo, can go back into it now. And it's down to the bottom rune, Mikoto, having a little bit of a brawl with Storm Stormer. But in that quick movement speed with the haste, sprints away. Quite the painful dagger crit as well there coming in from the PA, but... 
Uh, yeah, we, we need to see Sven's entrance to the game and how it's gonna happen. He does have the full Echo Saber coming out now, and he's farming up the Blink next. So once he gets Blink, that's when he's gonna get involved and join these fights. Uh, but for now, Entity taking a pretty pretty farm-heavy approach into this game, and I mean, it's working out. Look at the Razor's farm. Despite him dying twice in this game, he is still 10,000 net worth ahead of the PA. Well, not 10,000 ahead, but 1,000 ahead of the PA <laughs> at this stage of the game. If it was 10k ahead, I would be suspecting Amar for something here. But he's, he's doing fantastic still. Yeah, something would be serious, <laughs> seriously wrong there. <laughs> the Grievel's Greed innate passive has been added to Razor accidentally. Yeah. Actually, pretty quickly get into his BKB and Shard. It looks like okay. Entity moving to Roche. Roche. Mm. I don't think they suspect this. Right now, we don't see a massive reaction anywhere. And you have Teamfight ulti available. You have the Golem, but I don't think that they're feeling like they're in position to even contest it. So By now, yeah. I think they've realized that Roche is being taken, but it's just too late. I can't be able to do anything. Yeah, they're, they're gathered up mid, trying to poke at mid tier one. I've really enjoyed playing in that bottom right hand corner of the map as well playing that was both free times. though yeah, they got roche for nothing no tier one tower nothing really being done i mean you you just four, five people running around in the jungle while the enemy team gets roche so that's huge for entity here yeah it's ages on stormstormer the only hero that maybe could feel susceptible to dying now has two lives so you got bkb on this oh, this fan you got manta and i guess bkb is like a thousand thirteen hundred gold away for the razor Right, so it's going to be a struggle for Talon to really interact with these heroes in team fights. Yeah, it's going to be tough to land any form of spells. And we can see Stormstorm already. I mentioned it that he might go back for the BKB. And that's what he's, you know, looking like he wants to do here. He's queued it up and Aghanim Scepter right after. So intentions are clear. Um, Talon kind of playing the back foot here. Not as aggressive as we saw in the last game. Would like to see them get value out of this Warlock ulti because any moment that goes by without you using your, your golem, you're, you're basically, you know, not getting full value of the hero. Man, Q. Yeah, my toes are curling. <laughs> I, can, I know that feeling. I'm close to death. I've got to pop my wand. Give me, give me a heal, please, Warlock, something. And that, was, that was risky because if PA crit a little bit earlier there, you know, one, one unpredictable crit. I guess you see it now. You get the indicator if she's going to yeah. crit or not on the next hit. But uh, hold the back attack. to back crit and he might have died there. Fishman just continuing to stack over and over. Like every time I look at this Venge, he's just using Wave of Terror on a creep camp at like 56 seconds of a minute. Stacking up even more for this Sven. So at the same time as they took the Tormentor and got that for uh, Mikoto, they also got the shard over on the other side's mid laner. So both mid laners getting the free shard upgrades. Queen of Pain got that silence now. So nice with Kaya Sanchez as well. Fantastic feeling. Yeah, incredible. Especially when you're playing into you know, Warlock Sky, Ember Spirit. You'll be able to silence them up, get into the back line, stop them from dumping their spells on you. You can just see the, the freedom of movement here from Stormstorm. Blinking into Creep Waves, no, no real threat to him right now with that Aegis in hand. Yeah, he's able to get more out of the map. Basically a farming Aegis. They're not really going to utilize it too much to pressure or take towers. But uh, as soon as they have the BKB here on Racer, it's just 100 gold away. We might see them make a big move. Already smoking up now to try and uh, set up. Blink on Sven is ready. Watson, 0, zero, zero. First time he wants to join a fight. They see them. 250 CS though, and there's the move in. Blink, stun, stun. Ooh, the fourth staff. Ooh, not quite enough. <laughs> Trying to give an option there to Makoto, but Q has now put himself in harm's way. Upheaval's down, but so does the Skyrath Mage. Falls with a flap to the floor, and now Ollie in trouble with another magic missile. Fishman chaining kill into kill. Yeah, that was beautiful. First connection here, going right the way the entity wants. Getting three kills and now pressuring onto the tier two. Panic coming out from Talon. They're split pushing bottom and top, but... You know the silver lining? That four staff allowed him to slide over the arcane rune, so he still has arcane rune when he respawns on the ember. <laughs> oh, did he get it? <laughs> he got it. I thought he was still stunned when he got four staff, but he unstunned and managed to pick it up mid slide. So, uh, silver lining. Good stuff. <laughs> Even while dying, able to keep his wits about him. This has been quite systematic from Entity, though. Building this lead, and again, we see Fishman in the triangle. What's he doing? He's stacking. Investing in his Sven, who is becoming very powerful, but we don't have that drastic gap between Watson and 23, right? It's like 1,000 difference. As this game moves forward, 
Pierre's going to have BKB, Ags, Basher, Rapier down the line, maybe. Yeah, P is definitely getting big. There's, you know, like Talon, they're behind, but they're not out in any way. Mid, though, maybe overstepping on jabs. Yeah, overgrowth into the chain stun, but he gets out his BKB in time. Amar was trying to drain him of his damage, but he gets trading, held back. Uh, trading overgrowth for uh, BKB is good, though, for Entity. They can go straight towards top and push that tier 2 tower. Without BKB on Primal Beast, it can be very tough for him to take a fight. And how this death ball is super strong as well. Yeah, how, how how do you break past this front line of Sven, the Treant, the Razor, yeah, and the Storm uh, Stormer? Storm changing his mind as well, going back for the Shivas instead of the BKB here. Recognizing that PA has a lot of physical damage, getting some armor so that he doesn't get one shots. It's very, very crucial when you play against PA that you build in a tanky way. We saw it yesterday, right? Discussing how having three tanky cores is a good way to uh, play against PA so that you don't get picked off. And that's what they have going for him again here. Sven is, you know, pretty big racer. Definitely looking super tanky this game. Even has the Gossamer cape. Protect against any stifling daggers. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think now. Was, was it Entity at Arlington Major that had um, Saberlight standing in? It was, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the entire meta they developed of three tanky strength cores, three offlane heroes that were, like, yes. untouchable. Yeah. The, the no-carry meta that they yeah. did. Yeah, they basically just played. Uh, yeah, Entity, they, you know, very interesting in how they draft sometimes. Mid, Stormstormer, doesn't have ages anymore. Let's see if they can finish him off. Silence, into the connection of the golem. Oh, half HP with the onslaught and the damage. He gets the pulverize off in time. Stormstormer dies. Great pickoff, but look at 23, now in trouble. Has to BKB TP. Amar was giving chase. Looking at the Scarf yes, Mage now. Four staff oh, up to the high ground. Beautifully done. Any gap closed to get up there? No! He's out <laughs> and away. Well, well, that tells him that they do not have vision on the high ground as well as nothing was uh, connecting on him. So I guess he did have a Sentry Neo Eye. He knew that they couldn't see him up there. Good play there by, uh, by Q getting away. I thought he was dead for sure. Ah, good burst of aggression from Talon as well. Going against the against the grain, against the rhythm of play. Yeah, connecting. I mean, they recognized the moment Aegis was out. They was waiting. They were waiting for this moment. The moment uh, Aegis is gone, they make a big play and they get the pick off they wanted. Even with the swap uh, save there, the Primal Beast still getting on the back and finding Queen of Pain there. Really, really uh, clutch by them. Hand of Midas, Skyrath Mage. Here we go. Late game incoming. <laughs> There's no way, man. There's no way. <laughs> I mean, I guess levels are good on Sky, but there's no way second oh, hey, item minus is the play. Let me just uh, Google five stages of grief. Denial, yep. Anger, uh -huh. bargaining. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Midas. <laughs> Depression, <laughs> acceptance. M Midas is one of them. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I cannot accept this. Games are going late game a lot. That's true. Every team knows this, but... Picking up a 26 minute Midas on Sky, I just feel like you, you're not really getting the value of this attack speed. That's <laughs> an interesting one for sure. So we'll see how those levels work out for him. Yeah, definitely an <laughs> indication that they, they want this to go you know, 45 plus minutes. One of those moments, he, it works, he's a mastermind, it doesn't work, it's gonna be a lot of lulls coming out, you know, the, <laughs> and the Midas play. Level 11 currently. I, I've forgotten completely that fantasy points exist. Can we can we see the fantasy scores? Do they still points. work? They oh, don't. No, they're broken. Everyone is at three point zero, so it's a oh. dead even. That's unfortunate. Anyway, smoke I think out. Val also forgot they exist. Man. <laughs> ah, no more player cards. No more fantasy. I'm all leading out here. It looks like he's going to come in behind Jab. Straight up onslaught to run away. Can Talon disengage? Initiation from Entity. Can Q get out with a TP? He can. And Jabs is into the fog as well. BKB TP, very defensive. Disciplined retreat there from Talon. Watson not really finding a connection. Top though, he sneaks in looking for someone split pushing. Gotta find the Ember. They have Venge behind. If they can double stun, he dies. Oh, they're waiting. Oh, but He's Makoto gone. is gone. Gone in time there. Jumps to safety. And he's saying, yep, they're in the top area, guys. They're all up here. They showed themselves. Okay, so big power spike coming up. PA has the full Aghanim Scepter coming out just now. 28 minutes. Has the Deso, BKB, Battle Fury, and Aghanim Scepter now. And level 20 as well. And even a beautiful neutral item in the Paladin Sword. So she's looking ready to fight. 
just the haste rune as Cat told me was trying. Trying to sneak it out. Yeah. Also nice to... for her to have the Aghanims because she can dispel the tree and overgrowth here with Blur. So she doesn't oh. have to commit to uh, BKB for doing it. Damn, you're right, yeah. Now they come up to maintain the lane, just push it out. Get back in towards Roshan, who is one minute away from spawning right now. Yeah, key looks like objective. Entity are fully aware of the move, though. All of them just huddling up here behind the tower. I like that Watson is queuing up a shard. This Sven shard is underrated, and especially against PA. Passive six armor for everyone nearby, and undispellable uh, Warcry, which can be relevant later when Nullfire comes out. Not a bad thing to have. Yeah, protecting all your supports. Super nice. And Makoto in a position to break the smoke, sees the tree and Stormstorm are in, but the Yule Scepter the Yules. dodging out from the stun. Sonic Wave is there, but the Remnant away gets Ember into a better spot. And they do lose Ollie to start off this fight, but 23 is in the midst of it. Is that Static Link on? Oh my god! Where did he go? He's dead. PA just... Oh, what? A couple of hits from Sven? That's all it takes! Yeah, it gets focused on fast, and now the fight is complete despair. They cancelled the TP on the Warlock as well as he couldn't finish there. Everyone just scrambling to try and get out. Q's still going to get chased down, and there it is. A swift move in, they lose the Venge, but two pretty nifty kills there for, for Entity and Roshan, open and available to them. So two super clutch things that happened in that fight. First of all, Treant Protector rushing in and dropping a high ground ward on the uh, Twin Gate there. First thing he did was just beeline for some high ground vision, and that high ground vision opened up the eyes of Sven, allowed him to get on the back line. Look at Sven going on the uh, Warlock. He's wrapping around, boom, dead before he gets to drop the Golem, and that made the fight very simple for them, as they can't Golem to tempo break here, and PA just dies. That's just a full static link, right? She can't do any damage, and then she disappears after. Yeah, yeah, Amar, Amar did a lot there, just staying on her, locking on to targets, and uh, a just beautiful, very surgical fight by Entity, honestly. I mean, super hard to kind of disengage and re-engage against this Razor Shard, right? Pulling people in. Yeah, now... She has no choice but to stand and fight. Yeah, I mean, she, if she has a good target, she can maybe blink away, but the, the fight was already so chaotic from her point of view. Her backline was getting, uh, you know, jumped, and at the same time, she was trying to deal with the Razor on the front line. And now you're going to have another tool to displace this PA as well. Harpoon is there for the Sven, completed now. So, always. on the side of Talon, they bought up a gem now and pass it over to the Ember. So, trying to prioritize Vision here, making sure they don't get jumped on the back line again. And they're going to go over and take their Tormentor. Definitely Entity in the driver's seat of this game, though. 12,000 gold leads and building. All three cores looking so farmed on their side. Yeah, with ages and cheese in hand, feeling pretty good about themselves. This Tormentor is taking a while for them to take out. Five heroes nearby and still the supports <laughs> drop so low. Q and Ollie, yeah. <laughs> Back to Fountain we go. Uh, this, I mean, you know, it's good to take the Tormentor, but this is also the downside of taking Tormentor. That's a lot of time that you're investing. It took like 20 seconds to take it, then you have to run base, heal up, and then run out again. It's over a full minute for multiple heroes. So, but it's the best play they can do at the moment, as they don't really own a lot of the map. Sven coming in. Oh, he's hunting. He's got connect to PA. 23. She jumped past him. Did he see it? I don't think he did. Oh, he, he saw that she blinked, but he didn't see where. She jumped to the Ancients with her courier. She was microing the courier to give vision <laughs> on the Ancients. So, cute little play by 23. Actually saved his life there. If he didn't do the efficient courier micro to blink into Fog of War, he would have died there. Yeah. That's pretty funny. And I don't even know if he knows about it, because he didn't see them. Oh, <laughs> just a fractional difference. <laughs> Sailing past each other in that, in that fog of war. And DD rune picked up by the Razor now as well. Massive damage coming out of Entity as they push forward onto this tier 2. Yeah, Lincoln's all over on Amar as well, so he can't be shut down by Primal Beast just going on him. There's not a whole lot of great ways for them to deal with that. And also gonna mess a little bit, you know, if you try and drop some fatal bombs Ooh. on him, might block it. It's pretty cool. Watson's hunting for sentries. He's already pinged out a couple using creep aggro. The range creep turned for like two frames. It was like, I'm gonna hit you and then lost vision. So he knows yeah. there's a reveal around that. Yeah, yeah. He's he's clever, man. He's got some crazy mechanics. Using that silver edge, you always wanna know where it's safe to hunt. Talon, you can see they're not really comfortable. PA, the only one out on the map doing anything right now in that top left corner. Everybody else just hunkering down in their base. 
Yeah, uh, uh, Mars is going to be the one to start slapping away at the tier 2 mid tower. They don't show too many heroes. Queen can show. She has the shield rune as well. Gonna time out now. Poor Ollie. I'm just going to have to stand here and wait. They're just getting systematically like pushed out of the map right now. And with the gem on Stormstormer, they're getting some D wards as well. So map is getting darker and darker for Talon. They need to make a smoke play. They need to push out the side lanes and then make a smoke move very soon. They yeah. Do they have one on the side of Talon though? They have one in base. Okay, they have one in store. And 23, not even bothering to go for Lotuses there. Felt something coming and showed himself a little bit on the wave with the dagger. And you and you already starting to filter back at least Stormstormer to maybe find him. Wait, is it is it at this point where is, is PA going Abyssal Blade the best option, or do you actually just start thinking, hey, I need Rapier to do anything in this game? I uh, I'm not sure. He went faster. I don't know if Abyssal is the play. Ooh, jabs. jabs. Blade Miller. Pretty tanky. He's rooted and standing there. Half HP. Very tanky, in fact. Harpoon does pull him back for a second and a swap back, a lot of displacement, but a good BKB out to, to dodge the magic missile as 23 goes in on Avenge. Jab still fighting as Watson is cleaving into them. Big damage onto that Primal Beast and a 1 for 1 trade so far, but now the PA. You're right, that is the hero that they desire. Get the kill. 23's down and Makoto silence. Get the Yules off. He has a safety remnant so he can jump to that far to the west. Is it far enough? Up to high ground near the Ancients, but look at who's chasing him. Katomi's coming. They've got Ollie? people hounding in towards them. I'll jump onto Ollie. Easier target there. Find the Warlock kill and three for one. Tree and Shard with the root cancel and the TP there as well. And three heroes down. Getting the D ward before pushing here as well. This is rough, man. Wisdom Rune just spawning as well, so not having control for that. Now straight up to high ground. It feels like this game is, is out of their hands of talent at this point. And diving yeah, they, in behind. They used Golem as well, so all the confidence in the world here for Entity. Even without Aegis, they can just commit. None of their heroes are that easy to burst and pick off, especially for just Ember and Skyrath. And an easy set of barracks. And he will drink their milkshake. <laughs> I forgot to check chat for if anybody who <laughs> gave us the, the reasoning for that. I'll have to go Googling in a bit. Milkshake drinker. Uh, second ulti coming out here from Sven after the fights. And uh, Glyph being used and now is a pretty good time for Entity to just reset. If they keep pushing, they're going to give a fight into five uh, heroes and 20,000 gold lead. They're just going to fall back. And God strength expiring. Don't want to waste BKBs or anything. Looks like Amar's already made the decision to go back. Farm through the jungle up towards top. I mean, every single hero has new items coming out right now. There's a ton of stuff. Refresher is only 100 gold away for the Racer right now. Satanic completed on the Sven. Octarine over on the Queen of Pain. And even though it supports, you're getting a lot of items now. Treant Protector has a Refresher. So he's ready to disable you. And if you use BKB to then try and, you know, get out, he can just drop another ult on you. A jam as well. Does Dai have any vision on the map right now? Uh, Not really. I mean, they, they have their own gem still. They didn't lose that in the fight. They still have uh, Mikoto carrying the, the gem that Oli bought, but they need to get out, and that's the scary part. Right now, they're making a little move with the smoke, but I think it's mainly a, a de-warding move. Try and clear out the map. I just feel so bad, right? You're in your base, and we saw there the vision toggle. They could literally see their base and two creep waves near their base. <laughs> they, they couldn't see anything past it. 90% of the map controlled by Entity here. Yeah. Kato Ami keeps the lanes pushed in mid. Top lane shoved. Tormentor taken by the Sven. Everything controlled by them. That's a smoke use that didn't connect in a kill, and you didn't even really secure all the D warding. You still have two wards right outside your base on the mid and top lane. All they did was manage to get out to the ancients and at least secure some ancient farm. So they oh. managed to find some tier four items. Timeless relic for the Queen of Pain. Here we go. Uh, that's big, especially he's so close to level 25 as well. Oh, Makoto. He's going to dodge the stun again. Fatal bonds are out onto Razor and Venge. Big Warlock tree rooted. Ulti. Sven is in. It is a nice one. And the second comes. Makoto rooted. And Watson just opens up. Destroying them. Triple kill. Razor moves forward with the BKB. And 23 does not last a second. 
jabs his left here as the golem's dropped on them. Watson's on an ultra, looking for a rampage. I'm not sure if he'll find it as Katomi and ATF go in for the Primal Beast. Jabs tries an onslaught. Positioning looks good here from Entity, though, to dive in and gather the kill. And there it is. Watson finds it. Rampage and maybe a double. No, Stormstormer will snipe it out, steal that final kill. And a massive wipe there, followed by the GG. Yeah, that was a fantastic execution. Again, another good team fight for Entity there on the